Right now we're in kind of a modern gold rush when it comes to data and data collection. And of course it comes in many flavors. Uh, can you share a little bit about the kinds of data that, that Agility and Digit is collecting on these multi-year customer deployments and then maybe at a very high level, what, what are we doing with it? Getting data from a customer site tells you what is really happening when your robot is out in the world. And so that's a huge luxury that we have access to that data because we're out in actual customer deployments. So when we're talking about the types of data that are available, you can think of it as kind of maybe three broad categories of data that we're interested in. The first is the raw sensory data of what the robot is observing around it, of the environment. Uh, so there's camera data coming in from the robot's cameras or LIDAR data coming in from the robot's LIDAR sensors or other types of information uh, about when the robot makes contact with the environment or its inertial measurements or things like that. Things that tell us stuff about the environment. You can fuse all of that together to build essentially models of what is going on in the world in these facilities. Now, of course, when you're dealing with live customer data, there's also the aspect of that type of sensory information needs to be protected. There could be privacy concerns or there could be personally identifiable information in there. And so we have to be careful about exactly how we transmit that, what parts of it that we actually encode and store. Uh, and that's you know, part of the pipeline that we, that we build. Um, but that information is a really rich source of data about the environment that we're interacting with. The second type of data that we're getting is the really low level cyclic data about how the robot is responding to that environment. So I saw these things and so I exerted these forces. I put my feet in these places. I pushed with my hands and I grabbed this thing. You're going sort of one level up. So here you have the environment. Now, what did I do about that environment at maybe a hundred or a thousand hertz, right? Um, that's also a really rich, dense data set that's telling you a lot about, you know, what, what are you accurately or inaccurately modeling about your world? Like, if you push too hard, why did you push too hard? What did you see and why did you think you need to do that? As we're figuring out how to make the robot more reliable and how to leave it deployed for longer without interruption, that level of information is really important as well because it sort of tells you what is accurate or inaccurate about your particular response to the world, however the robot is doing that, whether it's learned models or whether it's uh, model-based, like model predictive control or optimization methods for deciding how to react to the world. Then you go one step above that, which is what types of tasking was the robot doing or what types of um, task level decision-making was the robot making? And so, you know, you have this environment representation and how did you respond to the environment? And then why were you responding to the environment? Like, why were you doing the things that you were doing? That's a slightly higher level task information. And that's the stuff that actually gets basically transmitted out all the time on agility robots. It's what we call telemetry. This information, which is basically abstracted metrics and um, decisional information about why the robot's doing what it's doing. What behaviors is it trying to do? What are the tasks that it's trying to complete? What are its own measurements of its health status that might be driving its decisions to do things or not do things? So that's another really important, rich type of data that adds another level of context and gives you another level of introspection into what exactly is going on in the world and what are you trying to do with it, right? So you put these pieces of information together and you have a pretty complete view of how the robots interact with the world that we can use to improve it at various levels. Sort of going in reverse order, the telemetry can tell you when you're doing the wrong thing, right? I was supposed to pick up the tote, but instead I failed to pick up the tote. Like, that's not good. I did that 400 times and I failed 5% of the time. Okay, well now I can look at that and say like, okay, I need that to be 2% or 1% or 0.1%. So what were the reasons that this thing that I was trying to do didn't work out, right? Okay, so if I see something like that, I'm going to drill down another layer. Okay, well, what was the robot trying to do that it didn't do well, right? Why did these events occur? And usually it comes down to the robot was trying to do the wrong thing, or the robot had the wrong idea about the world for some reason. And so as you're trying to go out there and do the correct thing all the time in all of the cases, which is the measure of success of a good robot, what you really do is you, you build up these large data sets and then you drill into them to sort of find 
all the places where you, you kind of deviate for some unexpected reason. Something was outside what you planned for. And you can use that to improve what the robot's doing. You can either take that piece of data and add it to a training set or a test set that verifies or learns about that type of condition, um, or it might change your approach for how you're encoding what the robot is doing. Maybe you add a, a check or an edge case where you say, hey, if the tote doesn't really look like the right shape, like maybe it's broken because then, you know, you've been picking up a lot of these totes that are broken and you keep dropping them because they're, they're not really grabbable or something like that. So that's how you create a system that can really run for thousands or tens of thousands of hours uh, reliably. Is, there's really no way around it. You have to kind of build up this database of, of of what the robot's execution looks like, and then drill down into these long tails and use that to, to build up a more robust uh, robot control system, right? And so we're basically following this, uh, this kind of path, right? As we deploy with customers, we build up this data, we use it to figure out where the deviations are, where interesting new data is, and then we can put it back into our system to build a more uh, broad and capable platform.